you can actually zoom in and out in properties panel and in edit type properties by holding control key and scrolling mouse wheel and if you don't want to use a mouse scroll button you can also press control key and press middle mouse button to zoom in and out if you want to snap between two elements without drawing a detail line to get the middle you can press S2 and get the middle of two points. This is Snap Override and very useful tool to draw more efficiently. There are many more Snap Overrides and you can access them by pressing left mouse button and accessing Snap Overrides menu. For example, you can set the snap to snap only at the endpoints of elements. For example, if you want to draw two lines with a small angle between them, you can enable Snap Override to snap only to the endpoints to connect those two lines. And you can also set shortcuts for each of these Snap Overrides. You can also quickly change temporary witness line's snap position without dragging the end point. You just have to click on the dot and it will change the position of the temporary witness line snap position. And it's a bit faster than clicking and dragging the end point of the witness line. You can also snap to the grid of the work plane. You have to click on show work plane. And then you can snap elements to this grid and you don't have to draw any more reference planes. You can easily change work plane grid spacing so it becomes a helpful quick grid for your element. When you edit a design option, you can only select the elements that are in this design option. But if you want to select elements outside of this design option, you can disable active only. And in that way, you can temporarily select elements outside of this design option. This is a helpful command if you work a lot with design options, but you want temporarily change some elements outside of this design option. If you want to align a views on the sheets, you can use grid guides, but it can be a bit difficult to remember at which point to snap the view to the grid guide. So you can change the grid guide size, and in that way you can leave only a cross, so you have only one cross point to where snap the view. And by using this method, it's very easy to align multiple views on multiple sheets. There is also a trick to quickly align new family instance to any kind of angle. If you drag a family instance onto the project, you have to align it manually. But if you drag the family instance to, to the face you want to align it to and press space, it automatically aligns. You can also make very complex wall types. Just go to edit structure, press preview, go to section view, and you can modify wall layers to your liking. You can unlock individual layers to enable wall extensions, or you can split and merge wall layers to create a very complex wall profiles. It's a bit fiddly process and you have to get used to it. There is no undo button and you cannot press escape or cancel or the changes will not be saved. But the results sometimes are worth the hassle. So go ahead and try this Revit trick. There is an easy way to level a camera. So if you're moving in a perspective view and you save the view and you want a vertical perspective lines, you have to have eye elevation and target elevation at the same height. So if you want to change that by hand, you can do that. But you can also use a shortcut under the navigation wheel. You have to press a right mouse button to access that menu or you can click on this small button. And then there's a command level camera. And you can also set a keyboard shortcut for that command. And in that way you can quickly level the camera when you move around into the scene. If you want to show an interior view and you want to change focal length of the camera so that all elements fit into the view, you can do that again by right clicking on the navigation wheel and choosing increase or decrease focal length. If you want to pick a color from some image, you can use Microsoft Power Toys. It's a very powerful set of tools that can help you in many ways. And I mostly use a color picker for the Revit. And when you select the tool, you can see the shortcut. And when you press the shortcut, you can pick a color from any image. And later you can input that color value into the color dialog. And lastly, one of my favorite software is Pure Ref. It's a very powerful software for organizing your references for your sketches or for your architecture. You can easily drag and drop images from websites or you can copy paste images into that software. 
and in that way you can very easily organize any reference images for your sketches or for your architecture. So thank you for watching, I hope that these tricks will help you, have a great day, and see you in the next video.